Beach House um, Modeling and Animation Task in 3D Studio Max. This tutorial will be quite short. Um, I've done a few things in preparation uh, for this tutorial. Um, and you can see now that I've got a, um, well, you should be able to see that the uh, background screen has been enlarged so that um, when the camera pans in the animation, it doesn't run off the edge of the screen. In order to do that, I've actually cloned the background screen and then flipped the U tile. So I've gone into UVW mapping and flipped it. So in fact, to the right of this point here is actually a mirror image of everything to the left. Um, but it, it's, if I hadn't done that, the image would have stopped at a line down here. And then a, um, the other side of the image would have, would have recommenced, which would have looked really odd. So by flipping that U tile, it, um, it makes things work. Also, I've put some, some trees in. I'll show you shortly how to do that. Um, I have uh, installed a wood heater and flue. I'm not going to say much about that in this tutorial. Um, the next tutorial will deal with the interior fit out of the building, so we'll, we'll discuss that in more detail then. So just to show you uh, what I've done with the background screen, um, we'll go into a top view. Uh, there's our top view. This is our original background screen, this thing that I've got moving at the moment. Um, so that's got the, the beachy background image mapped onto it. Uh, you could get away with using a, a flat object to do that, but I find that when we animate the camera, um, it, it, if the image is um, mapped onto a curved screen, it gives the, a better illusion of the background actually being live um, footage rather than just a fixed image. It, it gives it a kind of 3D quality, much like a, a CMAX cinema does with its curved screen. So I've just cloned that um, object. There it is again. I've just cloned it. And so I've gone edit, clone, copy. Okay. And moved the copy and rotated the copy until I got it in a position where it actually uh, met up here. So that's that's the position of, of the copied uh, screen. Okay, so uh, once I did that, I went into UVW map and I put a flip on the U tile. Now I've already flipped that, so if I flip it again, it's, it's actually going to go back to its original layout. So you just, just tick the flip box there and that'll give you a mirror image of what's on this screen here. Um, the next thing that I did uh, when I was preparing to render uh, was to um, allow for the fact that um, this side of the building wasn't getting much direct light on it. In fact, when I rendered it, it was actually quite dark. It was unrealistically dark. So there was plenty of light here and the shadows in the front down the right hand side were all working nicely. Uh, but this area here was, was almost completely black. So, uh, in order to fix that, I simply went into the top view and placed another um, Omni light. Uh, this so, that light there, and that particular light uh, was, um, uh, I adjusted it to uh, about a 0.15 intensity with no shadows on. So, all it's doing is filling in a little bit of a dark patch. If we use the default 1.0 um, light intensity, uh, it would have added a, a lot of light to the whole scene and, and made it look overexposed. We do, it is a shaded area. We, do, we don't want it as bright as the front of the building. So that light, even though we can't see it in that render, is sitting about where I've got the cursor now. And it just uh, brightens up enough to make it look realistic. Uh, the third thing that I did was to put a, a, a fascia board around the outside of the roof. And I thought, what's an easy way to do that? So basically what I did was um, I selected the roof itself. Um, I'll try and show you how I did that. Um, so I selected the roof and then um, cloned it. 
actually won't go through the actual process now because I've already got it there, but I, I cloned the roof. Um, I uh, used the Select and Uniform Scale tool and made the roof a little bit bigger in every direction. So just scaled it up very slightly. I went to Material Editor. I got my uh, white material that I've been putting on pretty much everything, that one there. Right clicked on that, assigned that material to the selection. So my bigger version of the roof um, went white. Now, in order to not lose uh, the view of the actual roofing material, all right, these, there it is, so you can see the corrugated roofing material there. I didn't want that to all of a sudden just go plain white. So the slightly bigger version of the roof, I then just dropped down. I just lowered it down very slightly. So if you look really closely there, you can see the roofing material sitting up very slightly above there. Okay, so uh, that allowed me to um, have a... Uh, there you can see it in the render there. So you can see the roofing material sitting up above, and then we've got this white box that sits um, slightly lower. Um, so to add vegetation, um, we don't want to get too carried away with vegetation, but I thought it's a beachy scene, so a couple of palm trees might be a good thing. So in order to put those in, I went into a top view, probably helps to maximise that view, and I went create, and the list starts off with standard primitives, so where it says standard primitives, I went down to AEC extended, and I went to foliage, and then you've got a bunch of different types of trees. You've got pine trees and spruce trees and elm trees and so on. I decided that the um, I've lost it now. Uh, anyway, I, I found it. Oh, there it is. Generic palm, right there. So I just clicked on that. I uh, went over into wherever I wanted to place it, just dropped it in there, and then it needs to be scaled up, okay? So you just go to Select and Uniform Scale, scale it up until it's the size you want, and you can see there now that we've actually got a, a third pine tree. Just make sure, oh, sorry, palm tree, I should say. Just make sure that you drop that down into the ground. You don't want your tree hovering above the ground when you do your render. So I just lowered it down until the base of it started to disappear below the grass. It can just go in a little way there. So if I render that up now, we have um, a third palm tree. Don't get too carried away. I probably wouldn't bother putting that many trees around it. We don't want to uh, dominate it with trees. And the other thing is that the more elements such as that that you put in, uh, the slower the rendering time. So thanks for watching. Uh, in the next tutorial, um, I will be uh, doing uh, an interior fit out. So I'll show you a bit more about the wood heater. Um, I'll put some kitchen benches in. Uh, might start importing a little bit of furniture into to the room and maybe putting some pictures on the wall to make it look a bit more realistic. Thanks for viewing.